Hello there, and welcome back to week four, PSAT 5A. In this example, we're going to go through probabilities of normal distributions. And in order to do that, we need to be familiar with the table you see in front of you called the standard normal table, sometimes referred to as the Z table. So there are several important things to note here. So first, the two halves, um, different scene on the right side of this line and on the left side of the line. So these are for positive Z scores as highlighted and on the left are for negative Z scores. And the other important thing to notice here is at the very bottom, it's telling you that all of the table values represent the area to the left of the Z score you're looking for. So for example, if I wanted to find the probability that Z is less than 2.14, then what I will do is look on the right side because it's a positive z-score and look up 2.1. The first column here is going to give you the first decimal. So for us, that's going to be 2.1 right here. And then the second decimal place we see here is going to be in this row. So second decimal here, and that for us is the five. So together we have the 2.15, and I just scroll down and I find this value 9842. So this probability here would be 9842. And that's everything to the left of 2.15. Now, if I wanted the area to the right, then I'll follow this little hint down here at the bottom and I just take the complement value. So now that we're familiar with the Z table, let's move on to our example. In this first example, you are given a normal distribution with mean 90, variance 81. Again, as we mentioned in example 4.1, for unit four, the continuous distributions, the problem will basically tell you what the distribution is. Your job, therefore, is just to figure out, well, how do I work within that distribution? For normal distributions, the standard notation looks like this. So you've got two parameters, mu and sigma, which represent the mean and standard deviation. So the first thing I'm going to notice is the problem tries to trick us a little bit by giving us the variance here. So the symbol for variance is sigma squared. That's 81. So simply taking the square root, I'm able to find sigma. So what you're given in this problem is you've got this random variable. It's normally distributed. The average is 90 and the standard deviation is nine. That means the shape of my x's here are in this bell shape where the center is at 90. So that's our setup. So now the question asks, well, what's the probability that x is greater than 100? So in terms of my picture, here's 100. It's a little bit to the right. And then I want everything to the right of that. And again, recall for unit four, probabilities are equivalent to the area underneath your distribution. So when I write it out, that is what the question is asking. Now, as we saw earlier, to find probabilities of normal distributions, we have to use the standard normal table or, again, the Z table, which means I'm going to have to convert my normal distribution into a standard normal distribution. So what that means is this number right here, I need to convert it to a Z. And we have a simple phase shift and scaling. In other words, we have a simple relationship that allows me to go backwards and forwards between Z and X. And that relationship looks like this. I take my X value, I subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. So if I plug in the values for this example, the X value I'm trying to standardize is 100. The mean we are given is 90. And the standard deviation we figured out earlier is 9. So running through the arithmetic, I get 1.11. 1. 1. 
So what that means for our original problem here is I want the area to the right of 100. And if I convert this to a standard normal distribution, this means this is the area to the right of a z value of 1.11. And what we saw earlier is when we look up these numbers on our z-table, it outputs the probabilities in terms of areas to the left. So if I write it out, I'm in essence using a complement rule saying, well, the area to the right is equivalent to one minus the area to the left. And then now I can go and I've looked this up already on the z-table, the area to the left of 1.11 0.8655 or 8665 rather. And then I'll do my subtraction here. And I finally get 1335 as the probability being to the right of the number 100. For the second part, we have the exact same distribution, but now we want to find the probability that our random variable x is in between two values. So to write this, I'm going to start off saying, well, the minimum value is 70, and it goes all the way to 100. In the graph, we have the 100 here, and then the 70 a little bit further to the left. And again, I want everything in between. 70 and 100 here. Now, one thing I'm going to take advantage of is a property of inequalities that looks like this. So here's a property that's quite useful. It says the probability in between two values, A and B, can be expressed as everything to the left of the larger number and then we're gonna subtract off everything to the right, or sorry, to the left of the smaller number. So how this works, I can illustrate this is, let me highlight everything to the left of this B. So in our problem, that would be 100. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bolder and that's gonna be everything here. And what I'll do is I'll subtract off this green area which is everything to the left of our smaller number 70 in this case, that's this part here. If you subtract the green part from the red part, then you're left with this yellow part that we're looking for. So that's gonna be our strategy. So let me write it out with our value. So that means I want, well, what's the chance X is less than or equal to 100? and then subtract off the chance that it's less than 70. Now, again, we have a normal distribution. So our challenge is to convert these normal distributions into z-scores. And as you saw earlier, the z-score for 100, we calculate to be 1.11. And then I'll work this one out for 70. So again, you see the work. I take my x value, I subtract the mean, I divide by the standard deviation, and I get the z value here that is negative 2.22. So writing this problem in terms of z's now, I've got the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.11 minus probability z is less than negative 2.22. And then both of these values, I will just read off of the z table. And again, you already saw this value earlier. This was our 0.8665. And then I'll subtract off this value from the table. And again, it's a negative z, so I'm gonna look on the left side of that table. And we see this is 0 0.0132. And finally, doing the subtraction, I will end up with 8533.
For the final part of this example, we're looking for a percentile. So again, same distribution, bell curve centered at 90. We now want the 80th percentile. What that means is I'm looking for, so in other words, this says find an X value such that 80% of the distribution is lower than it. So that means instead of finding a probability, I'm looking for an actual value on this x-axis right here. Now, I don't know what the x is, that's the point of the problem, but I do know that 80% of the distribution falls below it. So this 90 here, the mean, well, this is the 50th percentile. So that means half of my distribution is lower than 90. So for 80% of my distribution to be lower than some x value, then that x value is pretty far on the right side. So this is the x I'm looking for. Now, if we use our z table, that will allow us to go forwards and backwards between z scores and probabilities to the left. What I'm given in this problem is this total area to the left of this x. All right, this here is the 80%. So now using that, I can look in the center of my Z table. And what I wanna look for is the closest value to 0.8 that I can get. And then I wanna find, well, what's the Z that corresponds with it? So the notation we're gonna use here is I'm looking for the corresponding Z such that the area to the left of it is 0.8. And what I wanna do is I wanna look for this number here on the Z table. And remember, this is not a Z score because I'm trying to find the Z score. I'm looking in the middle of my Z table and then looking out to the margins to find the Z. And if I do this, and if you guys take out your Z table, you can see that the closest value we get is a z value of 0.84. And then from here, I'm just going to go through some algebra again, because remember our relationship between z and x is this equation here. And so for this particular problem, we found this z score to be 0.84. The x is what we're looking for. The mu is the center of the graph, we note 90. And then the sigma is also given to us as nine. So now once I solve for x, that would represent my 80th percentile. So going through a little bit of algebra here, the value for x I end up getting is 97.56, which makes sense that it's on the right side of the 90 that our picture shows. And that wraps up this example for the normal distribution.